Panther. Hi, this is Rico Figliolini, host of Peach Recorder's Life and Atlanta Anime and Gaming. We're here with Tony Oliver. Thank you, Tony, for showing, uh, for being here. Thank and, you. And for this interview. We're here at Anime Week in Atlanta. So, uh, great show. We've been, I've been here several times, and it's, and it's always great mm -hmm. talking to voiceover actors. Well, thanks. Yeah. So, I appreciate you uh, doing this. I learned a lot. And one of my kids, I have three kids, the youngest right now is 19. Mm -hmm. He wants to do voice acting. And I'm like, you know, you really got to, like, that, that's a trade that I've learned over the years. It's not just voiceover acting. There's other things involved. There is a lot of other things involved. And uh, it's it's a tough profession to get into because yeah. everybody wants to be into it. Um, right. And everybody thinks it's easy and it's not. Uh, and it takes a lot of, uh, a little bit of determination, uh, a little bit of grit, and a lot of luck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a luck, lot of luck involved luck, in this. Yes. <laughs> if you don't put yourself out, you don't get those opportunities. Exactly. Right? Now, Tony's been the named IMDb's top 20 all-time anime actor mm -hmm. list here on that. Right? Yeah, that was a surprise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's a great list to be on, so it's not like any other list. That's, that's, a, uh, the, that's a good list. That's a good website, IMDb. Um, but this, so you've done a lot uh, yeah. over the year, but you started out as, a, as an actor, like in front of the camera, I think. Right? Yeah, stage actually, actor. I didn't do very well in front of the camera. I started as a stage actor. Stage doing mostly actor. musicals in Los Angeles, so I did a lot of music. I'm a singer, singer so I did okay. a lot of musicals and, and a few plays, and uh, and tried to break into television and, and right. film there, and got to audition for some big things. I got to I was up for Happy Days a couple times, and really? for Vernon Shirley once or twice. I was up for Pony Boy and The Outsiders. I was up for Bruno Martelli and Fame. <laughs> I was up for some really big roles and never <laughs> landed any of them. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so uh, so theater I was good at, and then I stumbled into a voiceover audition. Um, mostly because I was desperate for money. I, you know, I needed to, I needed a gig. Um, I was between day jobs, <laughs> and uh, and uh, so they uh, they were looking for someone who sounded like they were younger than eighteen, but was over eighteen for the labor laws, uh -huh. and uh, and who had experience. So technically, yeah. I had ADR expert ADR is automated dialogue replacement. So this was a dubbing job, and and I, I technically had dubbed one line on a moviola and a student film that I was in. <laughs> ah, so that counted. So I, so I technically wasn't lying, but I didn't have any real experience. But I went ahead and I auditioned and I got the little part. And it was a little tiny uh, background part for a Louis Mall film. If you've never seen a Louis Mall film, oh, don't. Yes. They're the most depressing things you're yes, ever going to watch. Yes, yes, I but I, and they liked what I did, so I got to audition. They pulled me out and I auditioned for something else while I was there. Oh, really? And that turned out to be The Sea Prince and the Fire Child, which was my first anime that I ever did. And it ended up, it was a feature film. And, and what role did you play? I played the Sea Prince. Okay. I got the lead, which was silly, because I really was not qualified to do that yet. And um, well, You can't even say that. No, I knew, saw I saw, I watched the process. I, I am a director now, I know exactly <laughs> where my deficiencies were back then. And, oh. uh, and mostly it was just, mostly was scared. I was just nervous, because I'd right. never done it before. Um, but it ended up on television. <laughs> Just up by luck, and somebody needed. No, no, it was not union. No, okay. uh, and that's then, uh, and then that somebody called me up, said, "Were you the guy that did this?" And I said, "Yeah." I says, "We'll come in and audition for something else." Okay. And uh, that was a film that never got released called Das Schatzis. It was a the Dutch film dubbed into English, but it's got me my union card. And so that's how I ended up kind of and getting then, into the union and being able to do other things. And the so. union's funny because you need a job before you get into the union, union but you gotta, can't get the job like, until you're in the union. Right, right. But somehow we all managed to do it. Yeah. It's much easier now yeah. because with, with new media, you can set up a company, set yourself up as a signatory, do a small piece for next to no money and oh. get your card that way. Oh, well, so okay. there's, there's, it's an easier way to do it. Now. And so there's better ways. And this place is like Georgia too, which is to some degree non-union or it yeah it's 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 a mix here because it's it's not quite a right to work state so the unions do have some power yeah. but it's not a full-on unionized state like california right. where the unions have a lot of power right so unions. it's a little bit in between and people like tyler perry uh even when they're working non-union they, they they pay people as if they were union and they're paying people good wages so it's not like they're being abused here yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of production going on here, mm -hmm. and I, I know there. Yeah, my son works here from time to time. He's a gaffer. He? Yeah, he's, oh, he, gaffer. He, he, oh, he lights films, and so, oh, so he's, cool. he comes through here from time to time. Movies. I used to be a film production major when I was yeah. in college, so I've done some extra work on yeah. movies. <laughs> so it's always fascinating to see how that goes. You, mm -hmm. You're there ten hours, and then the actors there fifteen minutes doing their role. It's yeah, I hated it. Uh, the few camera pieces I did, I, I'm not very good on camera, and uh, and I just the, the falling asleep, waiting, and now suddenly I have to be on. And yeah. I'm like, Yes. You know, oh, wow. yeah. So when you got into voice acting, you started getting into it. I mean, you've done probably quite a quite a few shows by now. A little over three hundred roles. Yeah. Man. 
That's a lot. That almost that would be like you would not be able to do that in a normal life. Yeah, actually, uh, for 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 a voice actor who's mostly an anime, actually, it's pretty low. Uh, there there are people with who have been we're doing this less time that have almost five hundred roles. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's uh, but my, my roles have all been good. I mean, not. But I don't mean that that sounded really weird. <laughs> my all my roles have all been substantial enough yes. that that I could do them for a while, so I'm not yeah. hustling. So you're not between shows, you're yeah. maybe doing 12 episodes or... Or like 20 or 50 or in the right. case of Lupin, we're in the hundreds now. Yeah. Yeah. So, Some of these things just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's good for work. That's yeah. good for a no. job. Yeah. Now, uh, it's funny because before this, uh, I interviewed Michelle Marie, mm -hmm. and Michelle Marie said, yeah, you know, I, I got into this because I didn't want to be a teacher, and I thought this would be good, and I'm not really good in front of the camera, and I took a two-day course, and she didn't realize that the teacher was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're my next interview in the, in, the, in, the, in the thing. So she's like, that was the best thing I ever did, taking that two-day course. Because she learned, even, even within that two days, she learned a lot. And she met another voice actor that she's very close to now, mm -hmm. also that has helped her. Um, do you find that? Do you find that in, in was it a solitude type of endeavor? Well, like look, it's 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 those people who could do it. I mean, she says she took a two-day course, but that's not all she did. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into before she got the two-day course, and there's a lot of work that went into after. Um, um, so it's not something you. I don't want people to think you can do this. You take a two-day course and you're working. Yeah. Also, it was many years yes. between the time she took the classes and right. the time she started working. Right. Uh, but she had to do the work in, in between yeah. to get there. Sure. She's a solid actor, so that doesn't come from nothing. She did. Yeah. She did the work to get there. Um, but yeah, I find it. Uh, I mean, when 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 Sailor Moon came out a few years ago, the, the new Sailor Moon, mm -hmm. I think five of the six sailors were ex students of mine. Um, I, I've been doing this long enough that I, I, I've taught a substantial amount of the industry. That is so, that is <laughs> yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Actually, that says a lot about you, Tony. Well, thanks. It's not just me. I have a team, and you know, we have a, we have a nice school, and this is all powered by Bangs and Studios, so they they provide the funding. Have you, have you done well? Sure, and they want to be up there, and that's a great flow for them. It is not actually. Interestingly it's enough, because really? we're legally not allowed to do that. Um, no, there, there is no. in, in other states, it's not illegal, but in California, it is illegal to sell access to auditions. So if you're perceived okay. to be doing right. that, so we have a very big yeah. firewall between gotcha. Adventures of Voice Acting gotcha. yes. and Bang Zoom. Yes, yes, yes. Now, do we recommend people from time to time? Of course we do, because yeah. we're human beings and we want to sure. see sure. people do that. But officially, we can't. Yeah, you know, no, we understood. can't connect think, the two I things. Think, yeah, I think in the state of Georgia, it's like that too, and, yeah. and, and for the reason that because people take advantage of that. Yes, you know, pay twelve hundred dollars for this course, and by the way, you might be able to get into this role or, or this company. We can refer you, and that's which really doesn't serve the actor. Yeah. Because if they're not ready for that role, right. they, they, it doesn't matter that you got the role because you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna show badly and they're not gonna cast you again. So it's better that you wait and get your stuff together before you start auditioning so, a lot. So <laughs> having done this for a while now, yeah. is this is this something that you know? Obviously, you're happy with doing this. This is something that uh, has worked out for you over the years. And stuff yeah, like I can't believe the career I've had. I didn't. I, I, I'm a, I'm a good actor. Uh, I'm not a great actor, and and uh, I didn't expect to have a career like I've had. Now, also, I went behind the camera, and so I've had a, much of my success. Most of my income comes from there, okay. um, but uh, but being able, but that's afforded me the ability to, to voice act, and I have some iconic characters that continue to live, so that's helped out too. So I'm not hustling like some of these guys are. So you you're in, you're like a producer, head writer. Um, yeah, I'm a I'm, I, uh, right now. I predominantly direct. I'm a voice director. Uh, I, I do adapt and I do write, but I haven't done it in a while just because it's very tedious and I got tired of it. Um, <laughs> uh, I used to produce a lot. I was one of the co-producers of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I was head writer for the first three that seasons. That was one of the biggest uh, things you got into. That's the biggest thing I ever worked on because um, it's still going and it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's outpaced. Our biggest goal was to out-earn the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. And, that was and we 90, did in year five. <laughs> and that was in 1995? 93. 93? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. So what's your, I guess I have to ask, and it may be the same, but what's your favorite role? I don't have one. I have a number, of t I, I have them split up by genre, basically. Okay. So for me, Rick Hunter, because he was my first, uh, but I can't watch that perform. I can't watch it now, because I, I see all the mistakes. I was such a young, inexperienced actor, I, I can't watch it. But, um, so it's Fred <laughs> Robotech. Um, Harry von Gungrave, he was my first villain I ever got to play on. It's a kind of obscure anime. Okay. But uh, uh, but he's a villain, and he was this really cool, kind of young, handsome, 
people liked him, yet he was vicious, murdered his own brother. So he had this, this duality, yeah. which was really hard to play. And when things are hard to play, yeah. that's when they're fun for and an actor. Vi villains are, even, are, are the best for actors. Well, I, I discovered that on that yes. show, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Lupin was my first Lupin, comedic yeah. role, and, uh, and, uh, and I never considered myself a comic actor, and yet I got to do that. Um, and, uh, and Minato from Naruto, yeah. okay. mostly because he's touched so many people. The, 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 imp the impact that character has had on the audience was, was way more than I ever expected. Right. Um, and it was pretty profound. And, um, and so, yeah. That's you, you've done these, these anime conventions before, mm -hmm. right? And when you find people coming up to you, what, what's the best experience you've had of that? Uh, or, or something <sighs> Generally, that people, I, I, it depends. I mean, it, it's, I, I have to try to keep my ego in check because I am an actor and I have an ego. I have yes, to have an ego yes, to survive in this. Ego, so yes. I got to keep that in check. So part of it is I, I don't, I try to, I, I actually get uncomfortable with praise. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. You know, I, yes, I, I yes. get paid for you this already. Yes. <laughs> you know? um, but I, I think my favorite thing is when people have come up and, and, and showed me how what we did inspired them to excel in what they were doing. And I'm not necessarily art. Sometimes it's I, I, because of Robotech, I have an enormous amount of uh, military that follows me. Um, I've, I've received this is some of the biggest honor I've ever had. I received a couple of challenge coins. The, the, the medallions, yeah, yeah. one from uh, U.S. Space Command and one from the Wolf Squadron. Um, yeah, I, you know, and one from a Japanese submarine. Oh, I have a yeah. fan from a Japanese submarine. It was amazing. Um, so those, so those, so the, it, so those are the kind of things. Yeah. Uh, but I've also had moments um, where I had a soldier who had just come from Afghanistan. Uh, literally got off the plane and came to the convention first before going home to meet me. So I spent about an hour with him, and uh, and he told me stories that just made my hair curl from what it was like in Afghanistan. Same convention, uh, the con chair comes up to me and says they have a girl who's who's kind of she has some issues. She 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 can't be inside. She, she you know she's very and she really wants to meet me badly okay. and asked me if I would go outside and meet her outdoors. So I did, and I, and I just looked at her and she she was kind of almost the, kind of the apologizing for being there. Right. And I just said, do you want a hug? And she just burst into tears. Oh, wow. And we hugged it out. And it was those, those moments are the moments that are favorite to me. Yeah. When we've touched someone, because that's the privilege of this job, is to be able to touch people emotionally and move them and, and, and make them feel. And, and to me, although that's part of the job, that's the privilege of it. Yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, you want to be able to know that what you do means something to someone. Yeah. Um, but more yeah. than at a surface level. I mean, yeah, it's something to them yeah, for sure. Yeah, inside. I felt. I mean, that, and that's not always easy. Yeah. To, to, for, you know, it's rare. For that, <laughs> for a stranger that yeah. doesn't know you. Yeah. Um, and even those people that know you sometimes, families, it's, yeah. it's tough to reach that. So that's why I try to keep, I try to keep an attitude of I'm really fortunate. I'm really lucky. I've, been, I've had a lot of luck along the way in order to fall into some of these roles. But more than that, the side of the, the, side of the, the industry I ended up in has been wonderful. The fandom is great. Um, and my son was out of work for a year and a half because of COVID, and we were out of work right. for three weeks. Right. And he's it. a gaffer, yeah. as you said. So, so, um, so even that, if I'd have been a camera actor, I'd have been out of luck. Yes, you know? yes, that would have been tough. <laughs> do, do you do any of the coursework over Zoom also? All of it right now. All of it. Yeah, this Still. used to be okay. an in-person com uh, classes that I yeah. taught okay. that then I would travel. I would take it to New York and okay. Chicago and a couple other places. Okay. And well, now we've gone virtual completely with COVID, and uh, now we have international students. I have students from all over the world now. See, and that almost makes sense because yeah. I mean, it is one of these jobs where you just need a microphone in front of you yeah. to a degree, right? Yeah. So now I'm not snap. So I'm never gonna. Uh, we're gonna keep virtual classes forever. Wow. Okay. Uh, but there is a class that I do called "Getting Out of Your Head: How Not to Voice Act." It's kind of an advanced class for people who are running into walls as actors. Okay. That one has to be done in person. So that will kick up again next year once the final union COVID restrictions have been dropped and I can start taking it on the road. Can you set expectations for other people that may want to get into voice acting? Um, I, I wish I could, but it, the problem is everybody's different. So it has to do with your background, your voice. A, a lot of casting has to do with whether or not your voice is right, not whether or not you can act or not. But do you sound good against this person? There's a lot, a lot of casting that has nothing to do with your right. talent. Right. So you have to deal with that stuff. Um, Right. Yes. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it, there's no expectation. I think the best that you can you can hope for mm -hmm. is that you're going to be able to pay your bills, uh, and uh, and live a fairly stress not stress free, 
but a, a nice regular middle class yes, life, yes. money wise, right. maybe take a vacation every couple of years. That's about the best you can hope for. And do doing You're not gonna get rich doing this is what I'm saying. Right. I mean <laughs> apparently I mean from every voice I've I've spoken to, it's usually that you have a um, secondary job or something else. Some, or, some. Or I've been like, I've been lucky I haven't yeah. had to do that. But even even doing production work, being a producer, mm -hmm. maybe not a writer. Um, do you wanna say any share anything else that we haven't touched on? We're towards the end of our interviews. Um I don't know. I just uh, I'm I am i get I'm start, oh yeah, I can talk about a couple things. I, I've, I've been holding on to this for a year. Sure, we got about a minute, I guess. Okay, There's and tomorrow questions. the game comes out, but I'm a Ghostbuster. Are you really? I'm a Ghostbuster. Yeah, I'm okay. a playable Ghostbuster in the game. I have scenes with Dan Aykroyd and, and Ernie <laughs> well, Hudson, although I never got to meet them. We right, recorded right, separately. Right, right. Uh, oh, but yeah, so I've been sitting on that for... Is your likeness in it too? No, not my likeness. I'm okay. Ghostbuster number eight. Number eight. I'm okay. the New York guy. So. <laughs> you, you, where are you originally from? I, I was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and I grew up in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. yeah. So never in New York, really? Never. Never been in New York. In fact, it was really ironic is that I was kind of thanked by one of the producers for having a nice, good, hot, solid New Yorker in there. <laughs> and funny. I'm just doing a bad Jersey Shore accent, you know? <laughs> Thank you, Tony. I appreciate you. My pleasure. The interview. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tony Oliver. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, guys.